Laydan, take it away. All right, what's up? I'm Bladen, and this is Neon White. Uh, this is a game that came out this summer. Uh, it's a 3D FPS platformer, and it's become super popular within the speedrunning community. Um, we're going to be doing the White's Heaven Rush category, which is basically any percent, but all the downtime is cut out, so any like sort of dialogue, cutscenes, we don't see any of that. It's just action back to back. Um, of course, I'm not showing this off by myself. I do have a commentator with me, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Humps. I'm the other guy that runs this category, and I'll be chattering away about the tech and optimization for this super hard speed run. Also the world record holder. Very cool and awesome. But yeah, let's get into it. So I'm going to count down the time here as we click the start rush button. So three, two, one, and let's go. So right away, we start off with movement, the first level, where we get introduced to the basic movement mechanics of the game. So we can run and jump around just like any parkour game. You know, also notice that we move faster on water compared to normal ground here. So anytime where we see water, we're gonna try and use that to our advantage. Yeah, but like we said, this is a first person shooter, which means there are guns and gun mechanics. Uh, the first one here is the purify gun in automatic weapon. Uh, but kind of the main mechanic of this game is that the various cards, as they are, the guns that come in the form of cards that we find throughout the levels and from enemies. Uh, and the main mechanic is that we can discard these cards for either a secondary ability or a movement ability. So like this yellow card here, the Elevate's a single shot pistol. Uh, we can discard it for a double jump. And the first one we saw way back there, and we'll see throughout the run, the purple card Purify, we can discard for a sticky bomb that can either destroy groups of uh, demons or launch ourselves in uh, upwards or forwards or whichever way we like. So we do have a uh, coyote time in this game, so we can coyote jump by jumping after leaving a ledge. We're gonna be right here. The geo on that corner of the building is a little weird. So we can kind of just skip up to the roof like that. And there's a little ceiling right above us. So using a coyote jump, we can kind of get out from under the ceiling and actually save ourselves to not get bonked. And another kind of primary speed run mechanic you'll see throughout the rest of this run. And you'll... So we can destroy uh, enemy projectiles either with our guns. We shoot the projectiles out of the air and that gives us a tiny little speed boost. Or we have this default card that we spawn every level with, our trusty katana card. Uh, we can parry enemy bullets as well and our own purify bombs. Uh, we can do that uh, basically anywhere to hit almost all of these levels. Yeah. This game is all about the micro optimizations. So anytime we're getting like a small little speed boost or anything like that, we're always going to try and go for that since they're pretty uh, risk free for the most part. There's not much uh, that can go wrong with it. Yeah, so we call that bullet boosting naturally. But even on top of that, uh, you see it here. Uh, we can shoot an enemy projectile out of the air. And then on top of that, we do what's called a phantom boost. Uh, we can shoot it. It leaves an invisible entity that we can then katana slash for an additional boost on top of that. And with that kind of tutorial out of the way, we are in Chapter 2 already, and we're about to be introduced to our new gun in the arsenal, the go. Godspeed. A single-shot rifle that, just like that, can be discarded for a dash forward through breakable walls and enemies. And worth noting, we do have to kill uh, every demon in all these levels in order for the exit to open up. That's the main goal and what we route around throughout all of these 96 levels that yeah. are just flying by. So one thing you'll notice uh, with the Godspeed card is that after we dash, we still retain a little bit of that speed after the dash is actually finished. So if we have multiple Godspeed cards, like here, for example, we're actually going to delay the dashes so I get full value out of that residual speed after the dash. And like we mentioned, uh, the devs taught us pretty early on that running on water is really fast, but it's almost good enough for speedrunning. Uh, water is a little bit janky in this game, so being slightly above right water here. is actually even faster than running on water. And there's an additional mechanic on top of that called water edging. We're just running along the edges of water, uh, slowly builds up tiny amounts of speed, which we'll be doing hopefully right here without yeah. falling off. It's very precarious. That's basically if you what are, right there. 
Yeah, if you aren't in danger of falling off and resetting, uh, you're not gaining speed. Yeah. So a lot of the levels for the rest of the shop are pretty basic, so we can probably fit in a couple donations here. Absolutely, and the, there is a lot of love uh, from the Neon White community pouring in for you. Uh, right. We have a $500 donation from uh, Nobby Shugs. Hope I said that right. 100 tickets to the $5 hype train, please. Thank you, please. Love everything that GDQ represents and brings the community and the world overall. And what brings more GDQ will bring more to kicking cancer's butt. Here's to the Rainbow Heaven Rush. Oh my god. And just like that, chapter two is already over. We're on to chapter three, introducing yet another new demon type. And maybe the coolest and swaggiest strat of the entire run. Uh, we'll be seeing the longest fadeaway shot in all of video game history here in just a moment. Uh, but these big bullet spongy uh, heads are the guardians. There we go. Oh, look a little off. Okay, now we're good. Nah, it's fine. So we basically just snipe a guardian that we skip from across a level and it's super sick. Very precise. And right after that, we get introduced to the next card in the arsenal, the stop card, as it suggests, is a quick little SMG. And when we discard it, we stop straight down, break through things, kill demons, big explosion. Also, it flashbangs you. Mm -hmm. And worth noting how we're kind of taking out these enemies from a distance with these automatic weapons. Uh, all of the automatic weapons in this game do have bloom and bullet spread and all that stuff. Uh, but if you just tap fire the weapon, uh, the spread will reset every time you do. And so with that, we can snipe enemies with just about any weapon from any distance. Yeah, you're going to see it with most of the automatic guns. So basically the Purify and the Stomp card that we're using right now. That just gives us a lot more consistency when trying to like snipe any sort of demon. Very Which, useful try. It has an unfortunate downside that we're able to shoot things from a really long distance. Yep. So Which we, means we're going to route around it. So we get introduced to kind of like the aim lab side of the, the game here. So this is the first one. We're kind of sniping things across the level. And so the meme is, is like, if you don't know, aim lab is like an aim training game. So a lot of people call some neon white, neon white levels a aim lapse exercise because there's just like repeatedly a bunch of fast, precise shots just back to back and it's super hard. So that was probably like the first example of the run that you saw there. And we are being introduced to barrels as well early on in the game. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, not the jankiest thing in the game and they operate pretty much how you would expect. Barrels blow up, kill enemies, launch you. Mm -hmm. They function pretty much the same as a purified bomb would, so it kind of just launches us in the opposite direction. And we're on to the last stage in Chapter 3, Super Kinetic, a recent addition to the Rush playbook. A uh, very difficult strat coming up here. Looking at this, looking good. And that's nice. that. We are already on to chapter four. This is the first boss chapter of the game. And with that comes its own unique challenges, including one of the most notorious stages in the entire run, Forgotten City. Yeah, coming right up here. There's a very difficult jump slash dash comb I'm gonna go over here. It's really tight, so we're gonna see if I can hit it right here. Nice, okay, it we got works. it every time the timing on it is super tight there's an invisible wall that extends out past that building so that shot is much more difficult than it looks yeah and it's yeah it is tripped up basically anyone that's ever attempted this stage and we're on to the first boss fight neon green the antagonist of the game uh these boss fights basically consist of chasing around these stages and doing these quick little damage phases in order to get quick kill times on him and while all of this is happening uh bladen is spending his katana ammo between damage phases and chasing him around so that we can get down to the fist card when we run out of that and when we run out of fist ammo uh we die but that's fine Ooh. oh no oh uh, i barely missed that i think i like bonked him or something that's unfortunate that's okay we get to talk about death abuse uh, so running out of fist ammo does kill us, but that's okay because we use it to skip Green's death animation at the end of these stages, which saves about that two and a half seconds if we do it properly. 
Yeah. Let's try that again. There we go. Yeah. So coming up on the last little bit here. And green's dead. Oh, and, oh no! I, I actually missed them. Okay, that's unfortunate. Okay. Third time's a charm, right? Absolutely. Got a little bit greedy with that bomb there. That's unfortunate. That's why we call it Third Temple, right? Mm hmm. This is totally Third Temple. This is arguably like the top five hardest stages in the entire game. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. Please. No, just make it. Now, in Blayton's defense, we've been spending all of our time learning a new strat for this stage. Yeah. I'm actually doing like a slightly easier version of it. It's just like, I don't know why, but all of a sudden, this boost up to the, the floor is just not cooperating. There we go. Yeah. So like both of our muscle memory is just gone for doing this in any sort of semblance of a safe manner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just going to play the super safe. There we Instead, go. so are we. <laughs> Failure. Timer stops, but we keep going. And on to chapter five. So we get the next gun in the arsenal, the fireball card. It's a kind of generic shotgun, but when we discard it, we get this also a dash, but with the added axis of mobility. So a lot more freedom in how we use it to move around compared to the Godspeed card. And uh, we get a new demon, the ringer here. This blobby ammo dropping demon uh, shoots out this massive ring uh, of bullets, hence the name, which like we said, you can bullet boost off of. And with this multi projectile shotgun and multiple bullets flying around, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for ludicrous uh, speed gains throughout these levels. And worth noting with the fireball, uh, it has a much longer lingering hitbox running into things compared to the Godspeed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can basically just kind of skate along the ground while killing anything that we touch and breaking doorways. And whenever you fireball against the ground, it has the same effect as putting water underneath your character. So we use that as well to kind of move around a little more quickly. Yeah. Pretty much anytime we're using the fireball dash, we're going to try and aim it at the ground. And you'll also see a good example of the lingering hitbox right here. We're going to hit the breakable floor under this building and actually grab the stomp card through, which continues normal. There's not much else going on for the rest of this chapter, so we do have time for a few donations. Oh, absolutely. We have some doozies. Let's kick it off with a $3,000 donation Woo! from 24-Bit Games, the developers of Neon White. White, slow down, White. I haven't had time to set up this donation for you yet. Best of luck on the run from everyone here on the console team of Neon White. We're looking forward to learning tons of new tricks and skips. Thank you so much, awesome. and we are so sorry. <laughs> very good, very good. Sorry for breaking uh, the game. I will, with that red now, of course, I will bring you the good news that Rainbow Heaven Rush has indeed been met. Awesome. Awesome. So very, very well done. Uh, so right here is the first example of explosions going through walls, I believe. Yeah, so we're going to hit these barrels through the wall with the stomp card, and that kind of just boosts us up to the, the next platform, which is a nice, convenient little skip. And that will apply to other explosions throughout the run. We'll try to note them when they happen. And the first, uh, the original gamer stage. Apartment is the level that speaks for itself. Super high APM, lots of uh, quick movements, quick card swaps. I believe that guardian is an extra not guardian. Dying, yeah. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take the slow fall here and see if we can actually. Oh no! All right, we're oh, just no. gonna restart that. It's okay, everyone wants to see Apartment again because it went yeah. by too quickly. It's too second of a level not to play twice, if we're, if we're being honest. So here's what's supposed to happen. You stomp all the way down, and you hit the ring on the way down. So that's a yeah. cool little strat. On to chapter six. New chapter, new enemy. Uh, these little purple trip wires. Not aggressive demons, per se, but walking into their little tripwire purple line of sight will instantly kill you. 
The good news is, if you destroy the tripwire, it will also kill any demons attached to it, or any breakable walls, floors, etc. Uh, and the developers, I think, had a lot of fun putting these levels together, because you'll pretty often see these massive chains of tripwires that kill everything attached to it. Yeah. One frustrating thing with the tripwires is they often, like, group them together. So if you ever try to shoot one with, like, uh, the fireball card, the spread on that card is spread pretty thin, so there's a good chance, like, only one of the tripwires die. And so you have to go back and kill the other one. To avoid that, we try and, uh, use, like, a lineup for the fireball card to try and, uh, get, like, precise shots. But even if they're just grouped up together, sometimes it just doesn't work out in your favor. We got a cool skip in up here. We're gonna coyote jump across this gap, saving the Godspeed card. We're actually gonna bring it to the end of the level for a better use with a... So we're gonna grab two elevate cards here. So you have two Godspeeds and an elevate. And then I kill that. And then we just jump across this gap here and skip straight to the finish, ignoring those platforms on the, the bottom left there. That saves like a couple of seconds. That's a cool strat. Here you would usually grab the ammo at the top there and shoot all these guys, but since we have a katana with like 30 ammo, we can just slash it on the way down, saving a bit of time since we don't have to reset our falling speed on the way down. Yeah, unfortunately there's no real way to speed that up there at the start, and yeah. falling in this game is very slow. It's so slow. Luckily we have stomp cards like every now and then to speed it up, but yeah. Yeah, and halfway through the chapter here we're introduced to yet another demon type, the Shocker Demon. Uh, they have these Pedals sticking out of them, jumping onto these pedals, kills the demon, anything around the demon, and launches us forward. But pretty soon we'll be uh, abusing that in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, we have Bucket or Bouquet. Yeah, the last kind bit of, of these the... levels are very difficult, starting with this one here. Yeah, this is where the game really starts to turn up the difficulty ju just a little bit. You know, it's, it's got a pretty smooth curve, but this is a noticeable jump. The two very precise purify bomb snipes right there. So we got both. That's really good. And then we can just ride these shockers to the end. Here we get to talk about the first frame rate strat of the game. Uh, so this game is timed with in-game time as opposed to real time. Uh, so pausing is free there between stages. And we lower our frame rate because of an interaction with the shockers here. Uh, so if you fireball dash into these shockers at particular angles, uh, they do funny things. And it is much, much, much more consistent on lower frame rates than higher. Yeah, so, so here, right there, we get launched like two or three times there, and we just go straight to the door, which is pretty sick. And coming back to the super precise aim lab side of the game, we have Trip Track, the kind of the last of the super hard stages here in the early game. There Getting those bullet boosts in midair off the ringer, but there's more. Got to clean up everything that we left behind there. So that's only just barely possible with the speed that you get from those bullet boosts. Uh-oh. What did I miss? Oh, I... there he is. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Could have sworn I hit that guy. We're on to race. Yeah, you'll the see tripwire the... race. You'll see the devs like to have a lot of fun with the tripwires. This level being a prime example. You think this level is an auto-scroller once you first look at it, but then you think about it again, and you're like, oh, we can just shoot one of, them, one of the tripwires in the middle and speed it up, so... That's what we do. <laughs> Just like that, the run's half over. We're in Chapter 7. And we get yet another demon type, as per usual. Uh, these bubble demons of various sizes cannot be destroyed from the outside. They can't be shot. The only option you have is to walk inside and outside of these bubble demons. Uh, and so that does kind of limit our routing options throughout these levels. They serve as checkpoints that you have to move through unfortunately, um, and they're really, really densely populated throughout this chapter because it's kind of the, the main gimmick of the chapter. Yeah. Once we get out of the chapter, they're a little less common, so that's good for us. It's great for what's going to happen in the next chapter. <laughs> yeah. And we talked about the, the funny water mechanics, uh, but Pop is kind of 
one of the the big culprits of taking advantage of it. So we've got these big downhill water slopes, and unfortunately we can't do anything with this first one here. This but is the second pretty hard one. to hit. So we'll see if I can get it here. So we kind of just go diagonal like that, and we can just skirt on top of the water all the way down, and just keep building up speed. Another setting strat here, we turn on V-Sync because for whatever reason, uh, once we restart the level there, having V-Sync on spawns us like a unit higher and then we skip landing on that platform at the start so we can drop straight down onto the shocker. Like that. This platform here is very tight and I'll sort of the shots, so this might take a couple tries. Oh yeah. I don't know why, I, I swear like the glass platforms have like a larger collision <laughs> box than they actually do, so I just keep hitting them every time, and it's so annoying. This time for sure. This is called doing the Mario. Mm -hmm. And once again, halfway through the chapter, let's introduce a new thing. So we have mimics now, and as you might expect, they are dangerous chests. Uh, before they gave us guns and ammunition, and now they give out uh, a ring of bullets that instantly kill you and anything else. So much like the tripwires, we'll be taking advantage of them to kill loads of demons that are not visible. Yep. I should note that we can't shoot the, the mimic bullets, but we can parry them for uh, a couple bullet boosts here and there. Yeah, and we did talk about phantom boosting, which is kind of a really quick mechanic in general. But for some reason with mimics, whenever those collide with walls, they last for an insanely long time. Yeah, I think it's like over a second or something that you can still carry it. The window's huge. So we're basically just getting boosts off of nothing. Yeah. Is what it looks like. We can probably get one more donation in for the end of this chapter. Absolutely. We have a $50 donation from the Hellfridge who says, Hi, Blighton. Hi, hey. GDQ. The neon white speedrun community is the reason I started speedrunning at 31 last year after ever only watching for over 10 years. Blighton and all the other wonderful folks from the Discord are some of the coolest, most insanely FPS skilled and kindest people out there. I came for the speed gaming, I stayed for the neons and the memes. For now, I've put the game aside because frankly I couldn't keep up with you beasts anymore, but you'll always have a special place in my heart. There's no dog like Air Dog. Show them how it's done, Bladon. Absolutely. And just like that, we're already into chapter six. That means we get a new weapon. Uh, Dominion is the kind of generic rocket launcher and we'll be rocket jumping with it. And the secondary discard function of this is a grapple that just tethers us to whatever we're looking at. Uh, but you'll notice that the kind of design philosophy of these stages is also quite different. They're super open, allowing for super creative and free uh, routing through these levels. And a lot of it kind of just turns into climbing skyscrapers with rockets and sniping all the enemies. Yeah. So you'll see it right here. We basically just skip like half the level and we just kind of maneuver our way around the, the skyscraper there. So that, that's what makes the, the minion card such a strong card, because you basically just get like three rocket boosts and you can just sit line after too, so it's very strong. And explosions do work a little different in this game than maybe intuitively. Uh, they always boost you upward, even if they're above you. So you can yeah. kind of latch onto ledges above you and scoot along horizontally super, super quickly with the Dominion card. Yeah, you just saw it there. We have another level coming up where we're gonna do the same thing. I'll try and play it out again there if you didn't catch it there. It's a cool little thing we're going to do here again with the, the whole thing with explosions going through walls. Um, we're going to skip straight up to the top of that big building in the background you see there. Where we're going to ignore two of the demons on the other side. So when we get to the bottom, we're actually just going to shoot them through the floor because we have their position memorized. So we're going to peek out right here. One, two, pop, and we go down to the finish and they're dead. So that's a cool neat strat there. Here we are, halfway through the chapter. Nothing to introduce except more, more strats. And this is the original Game Lab strat. A super open level with lots of balloon demons that you just click on them and you win. Yeah, just a couple, just a couple ten thousand snipes. No be moving on. So 
So in this level, uh, a quick example of it there, and hopefully we get to see it again. Much like Purify Bombs, you can bullet boost off of your own rockets as they fly through the air. Uh, there is an unfortunate downside to it. Uh, sometimes they just explode when you do that. Yeah, that's probably going to happen here, because it always does. Oh, maybe not. We got lucky. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it goes. Jinx it. Yeah. Uh, we don't know why that happens. Yeah. We, we have some theories and some ideas, and we know the rockets have health, kind of. Uh, but sometimes they just die in one bullet. Yeah. And it only happens with, like, certain guns, too, so it's really weird. This is another super fun strat that has seen a lot of evolution over time uh, for both IL and for Rush. Yeah, this Rose has, like, it's had so many different reroutes. So here's going to be the, the ceiling strat again with the rocket boost right here. And I just got to get stuck to the ceiling there so we can maximize our horizontal boost. And just get straight to the end because we can do that with this card. We're on what is known as Birthday Streak, a fan favorite uh, IL stage from the community. This is a super hard strat, so we're going to see if I can actually hit this. An absurdly hard. Blayton's going to be doing a maybe a simpler. It's not simple. Uh, uh, we're, he's going to be trying to hit some demons that are very far away. Uh, close. This pair, I think he, we should be he good. He hit the hard okay. shot. Yeah. Only because I spam like three rockets there. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, in the IL, you just hit that while you're skating by on your grapple hook. And uh, <laughs> it's it's hard. It sucks. Yeah. Uh, this might be an unfortunate victim stage of the kind of design philosophy of the rockets. We just collect a bunch of them and then climb a skyscraper again. Yeah. That's supposed to be like a 45, 50 second level, but we th turn it into a 25 second level with that skip. It's uh, a bit much. And with that, here in Ooh. Chapter 9, the culmination of everything we've learned so far. This is the hardest collection of levels here, kind of going towards the end of the game. Uh, they are super dense. They have a lot of variety in the demons and the, the weapons that you use throughout them. They're much longer stages. And because they're not full of Dominion cards, we can't cheese them as hard. Yeah, some of them have Dominion cards here and there. Yeah, it's basically just like a test of everything you've learned up to this point. That's like a kind of like last little gauntlet to lead into the, uh, the end game of the run here. This level's pretty hard. This is Vault. We're going to be trying to snipe clusters of enemies with these rockets and it's pretty tight so you might actually miss one okay i got those first You're ones good. got another one at the end here let's see if we can hit it easy all right we're good <laughs> just awesome. like that yeah so one thing we haven't talked about yet is vending machines which are just vending machines that'll like spit out cards if you hit them so we hit one through the wall there and we just pick it up on the way but the reason we don't usually use those vending machines because it takes like a couple seconds for the card to actually get spit out and so they're very slow unless you can hit it early and pick it up on the way which we just did there because we can uh hit it through the wall with the explosion fortunately and that's the only one we'll see in the entire run yeah it's the only application so uh these next few levels there's not really much to introduce so we could probably get in a few donations here absolutely a lot of love pouring in a lot of love uh, we have a $40 donation for Lovable Man, who says, Have fun with the runs, Blighton and Tordana. I would say good luck with the third temple for you, Blighton, but I think you, you of all people, will probably be fine. Biggest Canadian speedrunners pile. I'm very happy to see Neon White make it to GDQ so soon. The speedrunning community for this game has been great, with everyone helping each other out in many ways, whether it's with IL strats, level rush strats, modding, or anything. I'm thankful that I randomly clicked on Azure's stream back when he was running the game. Otherwise, I would have missed out on such a great game. P.S. I'll never forgive you for what you did to Ricochet. I'm at a perpetual three-second time loss. <laughs> we don't talk about Ricochet. <laughs> time for one more? Or... Yeah, we can do one more. All right, we got gotcha. you. $10, actually $30, I should say, comes in from Hot Anime Catboy saying, Show them why we're called Neons, Bladeon. Also, be sure not to go back to Air Dog. Not happening. <laughs> and we are coming up on arguably the hardest, I think. I think Bladen will say this is the second hardest stage in the entire yep. run. 
Uh, estate is a super fast pace, super ridiculous, and it'll happen before you even notice it. We're going to grab a fireball card through the wall there. Yeah, I mean, everything just kind of comes together. Lots of demons to kill, lots of fireball dashes, lots of things happening in every direction. And uh, carefully routed dashes and uh, ammo management, all that stuff. One little spray for the pen. Yeah, right there. That was incredible. So one thing about uh, the green enemies, the jumpers, is they actually jump when they attack you, and it moves their hurt box too. So usually we would snipe this jumper over here immediately, but we're going to delay our shot so it actually kills, gets killed by the tripwire. And we need to finish off this tripwire here because it didn't die. I'm thinking I missed something up there, so we're going to restart this. That's, that, as I was saying earlier, back in, uh, I think, Chapter 6, that's kind of unfortunate trying to shoot tripwires, these big tr clusters with uh, the fireball card because sometimes stuff just doesn't die. Yeah, it was He's all leading up to the stage. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost like a handful of runs to the stage. It's painful. Another example here of the shocker bug we'll be doing here with the low FPS fireball dash. Kill some tripwires there at the start, dash into the shocker, and then go zoom into the next one. Yeah. The rest of the stage, unfortunately, is a bit of an auto-scroller. We're just kind of hopping from shocker to shocker, uh, moving through the stage like you normally would. Yeah, the only way you can really like progress with these shockers is to actually land on it. And like you can't really speed up your falling at all, so we're kind of just waiting for the most part. But with that, we're at the last stage of Chapter 9. Fortress has gone through a, a bit of a reroute recently, a super cool strat we're going to see here. And as well as the Mimic uh, Phantom Boost, you'll see as we kind of cleave our way through the hallway here and we get boosts off of all of those. So there's a large group of balloons here that we're going to skip. We'll get them later. Yep. We're just going to go skydiving real quick. Finish these guys off. Just like that. And we're moving on to chapter 10. So this is pretty much like the beginning of the end, I would say. Moving into endgame here. This is the only breather of the run, really. Uh, this is the only break you get just holding W, going towards the end of this stage. No enemies, uh, no super complex movement. But this is the only break you get after that super crazy gauntlet and right before the hardest stage in the entire game. Yep. So we got another boss fight coming up. Uh, it's gonna be a really, uh, it's gonna be a really tight fight. So I'm gonna focus up here. Once we every get to point that of damage level. matters as we're chasing them around here. Yep. Uh, in order oh. to set up. <laughs> oh, unfortunate. Honestly, Unlucky. that's just really good because now we got time for more donations. We can probably get like one or two in. Yeah, I appreciate you doing that for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, we had $50 from Ajai or Ahai, I'm not sure, but it says, Hello, Bladen and everyone. I remember watching the Ghost Runner GDQ run being one of the first yeah. GDQ runs I watched, and Blyden went absolutely ham, expecting an amazing run from him, and good luck, Blyden. That run went a lot better than this one. I'll say that. <laughs> no, this is great. This is great. Um, we have also uh, $25 from Rathu Lee, who said, donating for the Rainbow Rush, hoping Blyden can earn enough Heavenly Delight tickets to get that sick new sword. Mm. Yeah. So, like I said, every point of damage here is going to matter. Uh, we're basically chasing him down until three different quick kill locations that we're going to be trying to hit here. And it's okay if funny things happen on the crystals. As long as we get the perfect yeah. damage cycles, we're good. Do a funny little boost there, get in front of him, and then kind of trigger his movement so he pushes us along a little bit faster. sort of the deciding factor coming up here. Some very difficult air shots we have to hit with the Dominion as he flies through the air. 
Got it. Get all the damage that we need. And he's setting up for hopefully a quick kill oh, and almost just the missed threat. the death abuse. That was the fastest kill though, so that was super sick. I'm glad I hit that. An insanely fast kill time. And that just leads right into chapter 11, which is a whole nother uh, boatload of stuff to talk about here if you want to take that. So we do get one more card before the end of the game, the Book of Life, and it is as ridiculous as it looks. It is a one-click insta-kill, uh, teleport to the demon. Uh, notably, we don't have to kill all the demons in these chapters, and so it's kind of just uh, a couple teleports and we're at the end of the level. Yep. So this chapter will be about as long as the last chapter, and that was two stages long. Yeah, so this, as you can see, this card has infinite ammo. Um, has very long range, but not infinite. And, and we only need to see a pixel of the demons. Yeah. And we have to, and we don't have to kill any demons, so we can basically just teleport to the end of the level, and it's just over in seconds like that. It is pretty ridiculous what you can do with this card. Uh, so we can't, uh, we can't teleport through those tripwires at the beginning of the stage, unfortunately. However, if we're far enough away, we can teleport through the tripwires, so it's fine. We can sometimes go to the tripwires. Depends on the day. Yeah. But yeah. Due to just how broken this card is, this chapter is very polarizing in terms of people's opinions of it. I am personally a fan of it, because I think the routings is kind of cool. I think those are the only tripwires that do their job, actually, on, uh, on Switch there. Yeah. Uh, so this is Congregation Jump. This used to be like a run-killing jump, and then one day the community just decided that jump wasn't hard anymore. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like Boom Jump. So here's the whole line of sight thing here. We're going to get a tiny crack in the wall, and we can just kind of just phase through it, because we technically barely have line of sight of the demon, so we can just kind of phase right through it and skip like half the level. Another one coming up right here. Just go through the door like that. And coming up on the last stage, Marathon. Uh, the devs, I believe, kind of place these tripwires to be funny, like, haha, you can't actually do this. Those tripwires are intended to kill you, uh, but they don't. So we're just going to use them to move through the level in about 12 seconds instead of this massive gauntlet of a stage. Yeah. They're like, okay, we think the player's going to hold forward and walk into the tripwire, but then we just, like, don't hold forward, and then we don't die. So it's pretty cool. And with that, we're on the last boss fight, the end of the run coming up here. Uh, another round of chasing green and doing damage. We're not really chasing a fast damage cycle here, though, like the other two, because with the Book of Life, we just kind of smack him in the face, and that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. But just like the, uh, the first boss fight, we are setting up another death abuse here, spinning out those default cards. Quick snipe, some quick damage, a quick conga line. Oh, I just got disoriented like right through there. Where you though? It's right and here. Right here. Go ahead. Uh, we can actually see the next phase of the fight from like really far away. So we're just going to kind of do the phase before we get there. If I can hit these shots. Yeah, devs were nice like enough that. to let us see the next phase and give us guns. Yep. So Green is supposed to attack us here. But everything's already dead, dead, so we can just kind of hop through. And the final phase here. Time's going to be coming up really soon. And time. There we go. That's uh, White's Heaven Rush for you guys. That was super sick to show off. I'm really glad. That went pretty well. So, um, what do I want to talk about? Uh, you can follow me on Twitch. I'm probably going to be grinding out sub-30 attempts uh, to try and uh, cause some action on this board here, hopefully. Um, this game is super accessible. Uh, it's a very... The, the individual level singing for this game is super popular. That's what most people do, which is a very low commitment uh, type of way to play the game. And the Discord is still booming to this day, so it's super active. Great run to get into. And I also have some guides coming out in the near future. I don't want to promise a date yet, but they are coming. So just saying, not a bad time to get a neon way if you found it interesting. But uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, that's it for me. Humps, if you want to add anything, feel free. 
Yeah. Uh, sometimes I stream this game too. Uh, shout out to the devs for making a game that we love. Shout out to the Neon White Discord. Everyone there is super cool. And shout out to the Bard Lounge. Heaven's Legend, by the way. Yep. Um, so I have been trading the record back and forth for quite a bit, so it's pretty, pretty entertaining. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for us. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for everyone behind the scenes for uh, putting this all together. It was a super fun time. I guess we're gonna to, I guess we're gonna hop over to the Rainbow Rush now. So see you guys there. All right. Well, that was that was just an excellent, fantastic showcase. I've played about half of those levels, and I can't believe how fast that that went by. Now, if you're wondering where is the rainbow rush that we donated for, it is coming. We're getting it set up right now. It is going to be run by uh, a different runner other than Blighton, so that is why we need to get it set up and ready to go. So, in the meantime, there is a ton of love pouring in for Neon White and uh, the Neon White community, so I would love the opportunity to get through some of these donations. So first, we have a $100 donation from Neon, Amethyst, and Pandora saying, on behalf of the entire Neon White speedrunning community, there's 40 of us and counting in voice cheering Blade on On. We're so happy of how far this game and community has come in such a short time. Best of luck to both Blade on and the end of his this run and Tordana in the Rainbow Rush. Please don't destroy our IL sheets too much more. Much love from the entire speedrun server mod team and air dogs all around. We also have a $100 donation from Jake Rat, who say, Neon White is not just my favorite game of 2022, but one of my favorite games of all time. I too speedrun this game, and though I may not be as good as Blighton, Humps, and other top runners, the times I've earned in this game have been some of my proudest gaming accomplishments. This run is truly on another level, and I hope everyone in chat enjoys. This donation is going towards the Rainbow Rush incentive, which was met, by the way, and I encourage anyone in chat who can donate towards the incentive. It's got a lot of great visuals. Violet's Rush in particular is a real treat and one more thing shout outs to idol for being an amazing mod super talented runner and just a great human being in general Speaking of, we actually have a $5 donation from Idol, who said, I'm so happy that I'm able to see this game make it into GDQ. This community has been extremely welcoming and supportive, and I'm so glad to see two of the greatest runners represent us. Keep up the great work. Make sure you treat Streak well. It is my home, after all. Air Dog. All right, and I'm just receiving word. We are ready to keep this. Oh, one second. Actually, we have a few more donations that came in that I wanted to read real quick. We have a $25 donation from Mochi that just says, Air Dog, Air Dog, Air Dog. And now I have received word that we are ready to keep this neon white train a rolling, and we're going to have Tordana run the Rainbow Heaven Rush for us. Show us how it's done. All right, welcome back to Neon White. Bladen did an insane job with that white rush. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for helping make this incentive for Rainbow. I am again joined by Humps doing commentator for me. So what Rainbow Rush is, is a combination of every side quest in this game. If you play through the main storyline, there's three characters, red, violet, and yellow, that will give you side quests throughout it. And we are going to go through these rushes that the devs put in and beat all of their stages in order. So we're going to start with red. Time will start when I click this button in three, two, one, go. And I'll let Humps do some explaining here. Hey, I'm back again. Uh, if you missed the first run, we do have a reintroduction of the various gun cards in the game. Uh, red side quests are basically every stage is centered around a particular gun and its mechanics. Uh, so the Elevate here, a single shot pistol, we can discard for a double jump in the air. And these stages are going to go by just as quickly as the main game, really. Uh, we've got 
super crazy geometry and basically all of these levels that we're going to be interacting with uh, to get to the end as quickly as possible. And notably in side quest, uh, we don't have to kill any of the demons. We just have to get to the end, break the crystal, and that's it. So again, uh, new stage, new gun. We've got Purify, an automatic weapon that we can discard for a sticky bomb we can use to launch ourselves. and. Much like a uh, bullet boosting from the previous run, we can boost off of our own purify bombs to go flying forward. So we fly to the end of the level here. We have yet another gun to reintroduce. This is going to be kind of a a gauntlet to you know get everyone warmed up, caught back up to speed for the rest of the run here. We've got the Godspeed single shot rifle we use to dash forward here. And one of the longer levels here in Red Rush is the stop traversal, the kind of quick SMG and uh, stop down discard card, as Looney might suggest. Taking advantage of the funny water mechanics uh, that we mentioned before, where being slightly above water or jumping uphill water, things like that. We're going to take advantage here in this stage. And these bars are kind of funny. He's not going to go for it. You can shoot that final barrel through the bars, Those bars but the bars have huge yeah. hitboxes for some reason. Uh, and we got the fireball now. That's awkward. A shotgun that we can use to dash, uh, much like the gun speed, but with the added axis of mobility here. Again, we're back with barrels. These funny barrels have really jank physics sometimes, but I'm going to make good use of them. As we slowly careen through the air. There's a funny as skip on this possible. level here that's possible, but it's not actually faster. We've played around with it a lot, but it turns out you just have to go through all the rings. Next gun in the arsenal is our traditional rocket launcher that we're going to use to fly through the air. And the discard function of this card is to kind of tether to an enemy or a wall and it'll take us straight forward here, just like this. And rocket launcher physics are notably weird. Um, they always kind of bounce you upwards, even if the rockets are exploding above you. One last card to introduce here. Ready the for it. Book of Life. And that's it. That's the Book of Life. So that stage, you're supposed to destroy all the tripwires to break this red goo and get to the goal. But it turns out you can just clip through the red goo and just finish the stage instantly. So that was red. We are going to move on to violet now, which will show you all of those same movement mechanics again, except with a lot more spikes this time and multiple types in each level. Yeah, so basically this entire side quest is made in the spirit of I want to be the guy with just loads of spikes everywhere. And that's that's it. That's the theme. <laughs> it's a great theme. These levels are arguably... Uh, this might be the most competitive uh, leaderboard in all of the side quests, yeah? Yeah, I think probably so. I have the record by less than half a second on this. Yeah, these stages are a lot of fun, and they're a lot more approachable as a speed run, as opposed to the 30-minute run you saw earlier. This is a, you know, two and a half, two minute. So they are intensely competitive. Uh, super hard skip here that I don't think I can do. Uh, we basically use a super late coyote jump to skip across the gap there, and then use some very creative uh, Godspeed dash timings to clear, to skip a large portion of that level. And we're on to counting with Tordana here. Devs had a little bit of fun with this. There are numbers on the sides of these walls that tell you what floor you're on, but uh, they're wrong. 
And if you stomp one too many times, because they give you one extra stomp card at the end of each floor, uh, you get sent to Idiot Island. Which, uh, I believe is an achievement that hopefully nobody missed, because it's great. Safety elevate there, I think it was a little low. Yeah. Notoriously hard skip here. We're gonna double purify bomb and then skip straight up underneath the shocker in order to make it over here. Very well done. And hopefully we get some clean purify boost here to skip over and then jump on the side of these spikes and skip all of these tripwires that are protected by their little bubbles. We're going to do some very unintended routing here. We're just going to skip all of the lasers that are intended to kill us, and we can just shoot those. We can just make ourselves a little doorway there, and we're definitely not supposed to have a godspeed here. You're supposed to go through this tiny little mini gauntlet, but we're just going to break through the door. Uh, and this stage uh, went through a patch, actually, one of the very few changes this game has seen since release. Uh, there's a wall of lasers here that you can just walk through, and then they changed it, and then they moved the part that you can walk through. And that is Violet. That was actually a super clean Violet run. That was yeah. about two seconds behind record. And now we're moving on to Yellow. The gimmick here is that all your right-click discards are unavailable, so we are limited to only our standard movement and jumps. We can't do any of the fancy double jumps, rocket grapples, any of that throughout these stages. So we'll abuse lots of level geometry instead. And also, uh, this rush isn't as intensely competitive, but I think that's partly because it's about twice as long as the other two. It also contains some of the hardest strats in the game in this rush. Yes. So we're going to kind of take advantage of everything that we've seen and talked about in the main game. There's just going to be uh, lots of funny geometry, lots of tight jumps uh, using coyote time, lots of bullet boost, lots of phantom boost, lots of funny water uh, physics. This is a great stage. It is. We're going to skip gonna most go this of way. it. You're supposed to go to the left there. We just skip most of the stage. And coming up on Climbing Gym. Uh, if anyone finds a way to break out of this starting room, let us know. You're supposed to go to the left. We're going to do a very late coyote and go right here this little pixel walk instead. Nope, missed the job. Oh, no. Uh, oh, is, is that it recoverable? Fine? It's not recoverable. Oh, well. So that wall is kind of funny, and you're kind of turning that corner a little blind there, uh, because we kind of go through it. There's, there's not a whole lot of collision there, and we kind of need to take advantage of that in order to make this jump in the first place. There we go. So there's some big angry jocks uh, blocking our path here, but White's feeling kind of tanky, so I'm just going to walk through them. up on Fisherman Suplex. Uh, I guess arguably the hardest strat in the run? I would think so, yeah. Very precise reflect here. A notorious strat, if you will. Gonna bait this demon. Uh, oh, no. I have to wait for the reset. We're going to bait this demon and send it into that uh, barrel there. Oh. Let me just restart it. You got robbed. I did. There we go. Easy skip. So that skips interacting with the, the jock on the other side of the stage there. And the rest of this stage uh, kind of operates like a B-hop map in Source. And we're just going to ignore basically everything else and then use super clean movement to get to the end as quickly as possible. Despite the, the funny level geometry of trying to stop us at every 
every inch. Yep. Another super hard skip. You're going to hear that a lot throughout uh, throughout this chapter, throughout this side quest in particular. We have to hit these barrels in very quick succession. Let's do it. In order to get just enough velocity to make it up onto that ledge. And Arena has a super great skip. Uh, there's tons of these trip wires all over the place, and normally you use them to break down these big massive doors blocking your way to the exit. Uh, but they're protected by these bubbles, and as you know, uh, bubbles, you can't kill them from the outside. But we can get a bunch of ammo here and just blast our way through the doors. They do have HP and they are killable. Attitude adjustment is kind of uh, the culmination of the funny mechanics, uh, funny physics mechanics. Just shockers and barrels all over the place. Just blasting your way uh, forwards using some of the water mechanics too to get little bits of boosts here. Yeah, kind of bonking our head there uh, under those platforms allows us to get slightly above water without just jumping out of the water. And we can use that to gain a little bit of speed. And last stage of the incentive is Yellow's Rocket. This is just uh, a rocket jumping dream, I guess. It's just a super open level and a ton of rocket ammo. Shout out to my TF2 you... rocket jump community I came from. No grapple, no other guns. We're just going to bounce along these asteroids here to the end of the level. That's a little awkward. But... Oh, that's very awkward. I don't have enough rope. He died. Oh no. That's okay. We get to see more. That gives us a chance for a donation before the end of the run, right? Meant yes, to do it that. sure does. Yeah, thank you. Again, I appreciate it. You guys are so, you know, helpful to me. All right. We have a uh, $50 donation uh, from Ajay, who says, Go Tordana, you got this, man. And we also have another $10 donation with a simple comment from Alex that says Air Dog. All right, thank you. So, kind of just by design of this level and the sporadic placement of these asteroids, basically every single person has a different route for this stage. Fly to the end. And time comes up when I hit this, and time. All right, that was Rainbow Heaven Rush. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks again to Humps for doing commentary for me. Uh, you. If you're interested in this game, check it out on Steam. Highly recommend, a lot of fun. Um, built from the ground up for speed running, which not a whole lot of games are these days. So it's a huge amount of fun. I want to give a shout out again to the Neon White Speedrunning Community Discord. Uh, you can find the link on speedrun.com. They're incredibly active, incredibly friendly. We're always finding new routes, people setting new records. And I'll also give a shout out to Heaven's Legends, waiting for a new ultimate in two weeks. And with that, I will sign off. Thanks to GDQ. Catch you later. Well, yet another excellent and incredible showcase of the brilliant neon white talent that we were all expecting. Uh, one quick donation. We have a $100 donation from Vori May that says, Ever since I saw first saw Neon White, I've been waiting to see it get the spotlight it deserves at AGDQ. Best of luck to Blydon and Tordana. They absolutely crushed it. Well, for everyone out there, it's time for your uh, time for a little break. I think let's let's stand up, stretch. Make sure you check your home for demons that you can defeat using you know parkour based movement. And we'll see you in just a few moments after a quick break.
All right, and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online, powered by Twitch. Now, I want to uh, give a very special shout out to our friends over at Fangamer. Now, if you're not familiar, Fangamer is a video game merchandise company, and we are very lucky to have a number of excellent products that are uh, GDQ specific and AGDQ specific. So um, as you'll be able to see here on the screen, we have a lot of beautiful products such as a uh, excellent looking desk mat, a number of sweatshirts and t-shirts and even a virtual attendee badge, which is always something that I make a point of grabbing. Um, also worth noting, they, shipping is worldwide for Fangamer and sales of GDQ merchandise benefits the Prevent Cancer Foundation. So not only are you getting some excellent, awesome GDQ-based products, it is also benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation just like a GDQ 2023 is. If you want to find out some more information about Fangamer, feel free to go on over to fangamer.com slash GDQ. All right. All right. We still see we're seeing plenty of lo love come in for the neon white runners that we just had. Uh, $50 from Aristophan saying neon white is the closest I've ever felt to being a speedrunner. Let's speed up fighting cancer and unlock that rainbow heaven rush, which was indeed incredible. So thank you so much to whoever made that happen. Now, Enigma Requiem donated $50 with a with a couple of important things to note here. They say, with the whooper on offer, all I can say is this. Put this towards rainbow... Oh, we got it. We'll put this towards being a vocal noid. Yes, that is right. We are... Uh, have are just a little little less than uh, $600 away from playing as a vocal Noid in our upcoming run of Yo Noid 2 Game of a Year Edition. I would love to see that get met. Let's see if we can get a last-minute push. Just need a little less than $600. We have $30 coming in from Lily that says, Let's go, Noiders! And with that, I, I think that it almost acts as a summoning beacon for uh, Yo Noid 2 Game of a Year Edition, and it's going to be run by Rythen. Go ahead and take it away. <laughs> 